Just when we thought we were done with Asteroid 2024 YR4, you know, we need to find a better name for that thing than just a bunch of numbers and letters here. But in any event, ever since we've discovered this asteroid, new things have been discovered about it. Things that either make it more or less dangerous, depending on the day that you're checking on the story. And I am showing you now a piece that was put out by NASA over a decade ago regarding objects that had been spotted hitting the moon over the years. This one impacted a little over 10 years ago, and we're talking a tiny object roughly the size of a small boulder hitting the moon at an unbelievable speed of over 90,000 kilometers per hour. But since the object was relatively small, it produced an explosion approximately five tons worth of TNT equivalent yield. But it was bright enough to be seen from Earth with the unaided eye as bright as a magnitude four star. Not that anybody was particularly looking for it at the time, but this gives you an idea of just how spectacular lunar impacts can actually appear. That being the case, we have recently discovered that it is looking more and more likely that 2024 YR4 is going to strike the moon in 2032, close to Christmas time. And right now, just about everybody is talking about what a spectacular event this is going to be. And indeed, it will be spectacular because we're talking about an object that's over a hundred times the mass and is going to produce an explosion over a thousand times as powerful as this tiny boulder produced. That's going to be bright enough to outshine the entire moon at the moment of impact, an event that may never have happened in recorded human history. At least no ancient astronomer ever reported something this spectacular, and certainly it was bright enough to be noticed by people all over the planet. But again, the only thing that's being talked about right now is just how spectacular it's going to be. But it's going to maybe produce some meteors that aren't going to be any sort of significant threat once they arrive at Earth, and that's about it. But is this actually true? Well, no, it isn't. According to an astronomer at Arizona State University, who produced a paper years ago about this potential eventuality, an impact of this magnitude on the moon is going to create a variety of consequences that may haunt us for years to come and we need to divert this asteroid just as urgently as we would if it were about to hit Earth. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Hey folks, back here at Space Symposium. So exciting, especially the things that we can see here, such as the new Axiom spacesuits. But we also need to talk about 2024 YR4 and the potential threat that it still represents. Nobody seems to be acknowledging this. Nobody seems to understand that a large asteroid colliding with the moon is going to present a problem in the future. So many people are simply talking about how spectacular it's going to be. People are mentioning that if there are any meteors, they're going to be small. They're not going to represent any sort of threat. Well, sure, maybe that is the case. But is anybody actually talking about the potential threat that it could bring to satellites, to the International Space Station, to our future plans of putting humans on the moon permanently? These suits serve no purpose whatsoever if going the to the moon becomes far too dangerous to be worth the effort. And that is exactly the sort of threat that 2024 YR4 could bring to cislunar space, to low Earth orbit, and everywhere in between. While writing about the events of the year 1178 in his chronicle, Gervais of Canterbury interrupted his account of kings and wars to relate a very unusual occurrence in the night sky. Quote, this year, on the 18th of June, when the moon, a slim crescent, first became visible, a marvelous phenomenon was seen by several men who were watching it. Suddenly, the upper horn of the crescent was split in two. 
from the midpoint of the division, a flaming torch sprang up, spewing out over a considerable distance fire, hot coals, and sparks. The body of the moon, which was below, writhed like a wounded snake. This happened a dozen times or more, and when the moon returned to normal, the whole crescent took on a blackish appearance. In 1976, it was thought that perhaps this was an impact that created a massive crater called Giordano Bruno on the moon's surface as the result of a massive asteroid impact. However, in April of 2001, NASA announced that this was probably untrue, citing the research of a Paul Withers, a graduate student of the University of Arizona Lunar and Planetary Laboratory. In a peer-reviewed paper, he asserted that an impact would have resulted in a blinding, blizzard-like, week-long meteor storm on Earth, but there are no such accounts of anything like this happening in any known historical record, including the European, Chinese, Arabic, Japanese, and Korean astronomical archives. Withers wrote, quote, I calculate that this would cause a week-long meteor storm potentially comparable to the peak of the 1966 landed storm. Tens of millions of rocks showering the entire Earth as pieces of ejecta about a centimeter across for a week is the equivalent to 50 thousand meteors per hour and they would be very bright very easy to see at magnitude one or magnitude two it would have been a spectacular sight everyone around the world would have had an opportunity to see the best fireworks show in history okay none of this sounds tremendously frightening but back in the 1100s there were no satellites nor was there an international space station. An impact of this magnitude would have created millions of tons of debris, much of which would have achieved lunar escape velocity, although not all of it. Some of it would have actually entered lunar orbit and stayed there for a considerable amount of time. Is something like this going to happen with 2024 YR4? Well, not exactly, because it's not as big as the asteroid that created Giordano Bruno. However, it is a thousand times more powerful than the largest rock we've seen impact the surface of the moon in recent history. That being the case, it is undoubtedly going to create debris that will escape the moon's gravity and then be captured by Earth's gravity. Now, I'm sure there's somebody else who's better at crunching numbers than I am when it comes to all of this, but the Giordano Bruno crater is 22 kilometers in diameter, and it is estimated that 2024 YR4 is going to create a crater about one and a half kilometers in diameter. We can therefore expect about 6% of the debris that was anticipated for this ancient impact to arrive in Earth orbit. So, in other words, instead of 10 million tons worth of debris, it might be something along the lines of half a million tons of debris. But keep in mind, that dwarfs the amount of material that comprises all of our satellite constellations put together, plus the International Space Station. That's a hell of a lot of space junk raining down on our satellites and space stations for days. Unless you think that I'm over-dramatizing this because this is going to be much smaller debris only one centimeter in diameter well keep in mind that in orbit at these kinds of velocities a one centimeter paint fleck can do the same damage as a 550 pound object traveling 90 kilometers per hour on earth a 10 centimeter projectile would be comparable to seven kilograms of tnt and i'm sure a number of you have already commented that by 2032 the iss will be deorbited and gone laughing emoji face well by then, a number of private space stations, including the Haven 1 space station from VAST, will be in orbit to replace the ISS. It won't just be one space station, it will probably be several that will be in danger. And if any of these space stations get destroyed in orbit, they will create a cloud of space debris that will start a chain reaction in low Earth orbit, destroying perhaps all satellites in low Earth orbit, throwing our entire economy into a free fall, our GPS systems into chaos, 
a wide variety of cataclysmic events that will last for several days. And of course, the long-term consequences will last for years, if not for decades, in the event of a so-called Kessler event in low Earth orbit with a shroud of debris that will prevent us from sending up replacement satellites for years to come. And there are other consequences aside from this. The debris that does not escape from lunar gravity will end up in a halo orbiting the moon, a veritable minefield of dangerous objects that will throw a real wrench into our plans of setting up a permanent presence on the lunar surface. And to make matters worse, the orbits of most of these objects will not be stable, and over the years, one after another, these things will come crashing back into the lunar surface, putting any base that we set up there in the future in potential jeopardy. So I don't see why this amazing, exciting light show that everybody is so worked up about is not creating a lot more concern in the scientific community. None of this is stuff I'm making up. None of this is stuff that isn't backed up by astronomical studies. After all, the researcher at Arizona State University predicted this 20 years ago. However, it is possible for us to arrange a deflection mission with minimal investment, using spacecraft that we already have, and investing money that won't even require a separate launch. If you're interested as to how we're going to accomplish all of that, I have a video linked at the end of this one. But in the meantime, we need to be planning ahead and not just be content to watch this thing smash into the moon. And we need to pursue these options while we still have the time. So yeah, this is no laughing matter. This is something that needs to be addressed. And what's truly irritating about the whole thing is the fact that we have the capability now to divert asteroids. We don't need to build a new spacecraft. We don't need to develop new technologies. We don't even need to send up an independent launch. This can be a secondary function carried out by the Orion spacecraft and the European service module. If you haven't seen the video on that topic, it's going to be linked as soon as I'm finished talking here. This is a problem that we can address, but only if we start planning for it now. We can't be taking these kinds of chances with our future in space, and especially with our reliance on the satellites that we have in low Earth orbit. This is something that should not be taken lightly, not laughed off. We are not looking forward to some sort of spectacular light show, but rather a key threat to our civilization and to our our economy. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and also please consider supporting this channel on Patreon and PayPal because that's what gets me to events like this. And so until next time, stay angry about space.